lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Rodman. Come on, everybody, give God a praise in the temple. Tonight we have a prayer. You know you need the word from the Lord. Lift your hands in his atmosphere and say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, fellowship, help me say, Lord, give us a word. Give us a word. Our world's in trouble. Lord, give us a word. Our families are in trouble. Lord, give us a word. We surrender ourselves unto you. We say all we need. Just one word. To worship everybody. Lift your hands and say, Lord, give us a word. Come on, let's sing. Give us a word. God, our lives are going to be better when you speak to us. Hallelujah. Our children are coming home when you speak to us. know by now. Come on, say all we need. Come on, say it. Say it till you believe it. Come on, just lean on them and say all we need. Just one word. This is what the Lord promised that you would. Things are getting better for you. Things are getting better for me. Somebody just wave back at me and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You promised you would. You got it by now. You got it by now. Come on, lift your hands and say, all. One word. Just one word from you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Because all, all we need is just one word. Just one word. Come on, stand up on your feet. I need about three more people to stand up on your feet and help me say, You promised you would. Come on, point up to heaven. The sign of victory and say, you promised you would heal my land. You would heal our land. Somebody singing it like you really believe it. Come on, say, you promised you would. Look at your neighbor and say, I see things are getting better for you. Come on, say, all I need is just one word. Just one word. Just one word from you. Doesn't matter what the doctor says. Doesn't matter what the lawyer says. But all I need is just one word. All I need just one word. Just one word from you. Uh, things are getting better for me. I feel it all in my body. Ladies and gentlemen, well, Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Well, Grace 
in peace tonight. We thank God for you, you and you, and welcome to The Voice tonight. Amen. 90 minutes of power-filled word. We're looking for you tonight. Amen. To call in and be a part of this live experience as we go in to the word of God. And we also thank God tonight for my brothers. Amen. In the word of God. Elder Ernest E. Richard Jr. Bless you, sir. You with me tonight, my brother? God bless you. How are you tonight, sir? All is well. All is well. Amen. And my other brother, amen, Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow. You with us tonight, man of God? Hallelujah. He must be trying to get in. Amen. Mm. And we thank God for others who are who have called in or either calling in. Amen. Is my dear friend on the line, Elder Kenyatta Garland. Mm. Okay. I guess uh I guess they're trying to catch up with us. <laughs> Possible. I hear somebody just come on the line. Amen. All right. Pastor Whitlow, you with us? I'm here, man of God. The blessing of the Lord be upon you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Amen. Elder Garland, are you with us? All right. Amen. Elder Elder Anna Henderson, are you with us? All right. I'm looking for some callers. Amen. So as we go along, maybe they'll call in. Amen. But we thank God for this fifth day of February. Can y'all believe that already? Five days into February already. We were just saying Happy New Year. But we are five days into February, and we dare not uh, be ignorant and not say Happy Birthday to Miss Rosa Parks today. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for all that she means. Amen to our people and our efforts to come as far as we have. Amen. Especially seeing that this is our Black History Month. Amen. We did not want to go any further without, amen, at least recognizing that today is her birthday. Amen. My Lord. We thank God for every, everybody, amen, amen, that is with us on tonight. Amen. Pastor, will you please lead us into a word of prayer? Absolutely. Absolutely. Gracious Father, in the matchless name of Jesus, once again we come before you to tell you thank you for allowing us this opportunity to serve your kingdom and your purpose, even through the means of this broadcast. We pray that you would speak to us tonight and cause your people to hear your word, O God, and come to have a greater relationship and closer walk with you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your man servant. Now bless him. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Apostle Whitlow. Amen for that wonderful prayer. Amen. And we thank God tonight as we get ready to look into the Word of God. Amen. Tonight in the book of James, chapter 5. 
in the book of James chapter 5, and we're going to begin our reading, amen, at verse number 13, amen, verse number 13 down to verse 16, and I guarantee you tonight, amen, there's so much meat on this bone, we're going to try to cut as much as we can, we don't know if we'll cut it all, but we're going to try to give you a healthy portion, amen, that when you lay down, you can't do nothing but go to sleep, amen, thinking about the word of the Lord. Elder Richard, will you please read that scripture for us out of the King James Version? Okay, let me pull up the King James. I have five others, which is no problem. Uh, from the King James Version, we're reading to from verse 13. Is that what you want, sir? Yes, sir. King James. Verse 13 says, Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Amen. And out of those verses tonight, our focus of discussion will be what does prayer do? What does mm. prayer do? Amen. And we're going to be looking in these verses tonight, trying to unveil to all that have called in what prayer does. Amen. And so we are grateful tonight. Uh, I, I just want to start tonight by uh, saying a few things uh, before we start unveiling and unpacking this scripture. We know years ago, most of us, that was brought up, amen, in the four walls called, that we call church. The Bible called it the house of prayer, the place of worship, amen. But I, I know most of you remember, amen, old Deacon Jones, Amen, Brother Bubba, amen, uh, Brother Snoopfoot, amen, who would get down and pray, oh, kind Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Uh, you have uh, been a light in dark places, and, and Father, we thank you because, Lord, uh, Ah, uh, you live there at the Big Dipper, and you, ah, oh, never mind all that. That was <laughs> showboating. That was showboating in prayer. That was not praying. And I know some of y'all remember the good old deacons who could read. Oh, we really thought they were getting down there when they said, oh, Father, we thank you. That last night, our mattress was not our cooling board, and that our sheets was not our winding sheets. And, Lord, nobody picked us up and put us, Lord, in a cool refrigerator where we were never uh, going to move again. Well, who cares about all that? Amen. So tonight we want to really find out what prayer does. Oh, fellas, I can't, I can't pass up this one. Oh, watch this one now. Father, here we are. Oh, Lord, an empty picture before a fool. Now, let me tell you something. If I got a need, if I got something I want God to do or need him to do, I don't need the empty pitcher before the full fountain. I need the pitcher that's full so you can pour out. Yeah. I need somebody that can pray for me. Amen. So if you're waiting for the water to jump in the pitcher, could you please fast and make to somebody else? 
Would you please? Please. So we want to look tonight at what does prayer do. Let me make my call one more time. Amen. Is Elder Garland with us yet? Elder Henderson. Amen. Any other elders, preachers, deacons, saints, and friends. <laughs> Amen. We, we bless God tonight. All Amen. right, men of God. Amen. Before we even crack this scripture open at all. Just give a man a little enlightenment yourselves, amen, on some things we've heard through the years that really is not prayer, according to the scriptures, amen. Whichever one wants to go first. Well, the first thing I'm going to say, the first thing I'm going to say, and this has been for years and it has bothered me, is people have been saying prayer changes Things uh, And that has become an issue To me simply because There are things that people have been Praying about for ages And it hasn't changed But the right Bibles Are their righteous The, the effectual fervent prayer The right to the day of the month And so prayer changes things That is unfortunately One of the most uh, Biggest Hideous stories that exist among the believer today. I'm going to leave it right there. All right, Elder. All right. Well, and like you, I have heard some of the very same things, and I have heard prayers that would almost make your hair curl, you know? I get some of those when you ask them to pray, they'll get real solemn on you. And they'll bow their head and they'll make that mapped out face like they just got put on the Randy McNally map. And they'll say, mm, Father, I stretch my head to thee. We said pray. We did not say sing. Okay? <laughs> the bottom line is this. I mean, you were saying, sir? No, go on. Go on. No, I was just, I'm saying, you know, and I don't have a problem with that per se. What I do have a problem with is when it is time to pray, God wants to hear his word. He's not interested in your moaning, your groaning. You might be in pain. You might be hurt. You might be distraught. But there's a passage of scripture that said there's another kind of prayer that we'll talk about a little bit later. But in the time that you are approaching the throne of grace, it is now time to direct your attention to the God of our salvation and what your request is. I'm going to stop right there for a few minutes. Yes, and I'm glad you ended with that word, request, because in my mind right now, I believe I want to start here. Uh, he says, make your request known. Mm-hmm. Make your request known. Amen. Let, let's uh, let's uh, define that word, request. Let's define that word, request. Uh, come, come on with us, Apostle Whitlow. Let's define that word, request, because I don't think people really understand what a request is. Mm. A, a, re, a request is simply what you ask for. It, to request means to ask. Some people would say it means to beg, but it's simply to ask. Your request, ask. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. So request is what you ask from the Lord. Not just just like when you need. An allowance, you request an allowance Just like when you need time off From your job You ask for the time off Your request is just simply Asking Amen Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute You you must be out your mind Tonight or something Because I thought for sure That request meant Give God your grocery list 
So if you ain't saying nothing, if you're not making a real request before God, what is he to fulfill? Now, that, that, becomes a question. That, that becomes a question. What do you want God to fulfill if you're not willing to tell him what the need is? There's a, the Bible teaches us in the Gospels that Jesus was passing through a town. Said there was a man by the wayside who was begging, and his name was Bartimaeus, and the Bible said he was blind. And the Bible says when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he began to call him and say, Hosanna. Thou son of David And there were people who were telling him to be quiet And the Bible uh-huh. says When they told him to be quiet He started crying out the more And when he finally got the Lord's attention The Lord said what do you want He said Lord I want to receive my sight In other words uh-huh. in, uh, the, Lord wants, the, the, Lord, he, the Lord knows all things But he still wants you to tell him What it is that you want, that you desire, that you're in looking for, that you're in need of. What is it that you want from them for him to do? You can you can go to the doctor and tell the doctor you're in pain, but if you don't tell the doctor where you're in pain at, the doctor can't give you anything. So why Amen. do you go to Jesus and tell Jesus, well, I need, but you don't tell him what it is that you need. And then you complain that your need is not met. Well, I prayed, I prayed, uh, I, cr- I cried all night long. <clears throat> Nothing happened. All you did was make a big, a big old fuss, but you didn't take it to That's the Lord it. and tell him what was really going on. And you know what? Let, let, let me, let, if let, I could let, add. Go ahead. Go ahead. <clears throat> now I was going to say, if I could add to that, the scripture teaches us to therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldness will not cause you to come in a timid fashion. Boldness will not allow you to come like you're afraid to talk to God. Boldness will not bring you before the, a holy God stumbling and stammering and not really knowing what it is you want. Anybody that has a real issue, a real problem, in real trouble, going through real persecution, trials, troubles, or tribulations, you already know what you're looking for. I got a great example in King David. When you read throughout the Psalms, when he messed up with Bathsheba and Nathan came to him, he went to God in prayer. And what was his opening statement in Psalm 51? Have mercy upon me, O God according to thy loving kindness. Now imagine if David does like some of us did and went before God and said, God, what I beat undid? I ain't beat undid nothing. What would that sound like? I ain't beat undid. I ain't beat undid like you're still in slavery or something. I ain't ain't beat undid. I ain't undid nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Why why, 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 is this though? Because that's a good scripture you brought up with, no? That's a good scripture now. When Jesus asked him, watch me now, what would you have me to do? He didn't do like folk in church and sometimes in the hospital, oh, I want to touch. Mm. Mm. Oh, I want mm. the Lord to bless me. That's not a uh. request. When Come on. Jesus asked the man, what will you have me to do? He said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. He gave God a clear request of what he wanted him to do. Not, Lord, Amen. well, Lord, well, Lord, if you just look my way, well, Lord, I, I, I don't know, but uh, if you if you just touch me, uh, Lord, I, if you just throw a blessing my way, well, God could have did, uh, Jesus could have did all of that. Uh-huh. He could have touched him, he could have looked his way, but would it have healed his eyes? Come on. With, mm-hmm. Because he asked him, what we, that means give me the specifics of what you want done. Right. That's right. He didn't ask him for a roundabout, round the merry-go-round answer. He said, what is it specifically that you want from me? And when the man mouth came open, he was not like the man at the pool who tried to give a testimony of all the years he's been coming. Nobody helped me in the pool. What do you mean nobody helped you? Somebody brought you to the pool all every day. Amen. Mm. 
Come on. You could have told them, stay here and wait. I think the angel coming today. As soon as you see the angel coming down, throw me. Throw me while he's coming. Okay. All right. But now. Jesus says to this man, he said, tell me. Give me the specifics. Give me your request of Amen. what you want me to do. Mm, and he said, God. Lord, I want, to re- I want to receive my sight. Yeah. yeah. It is Amen. another mixed up thing. If he needed sight, uh-huh. why would he put a request in for finance? Okay. Hello. Okay. Huh? If, he needed, if, he needed, if he needed sight, why would he ask God, oh God, make a way. I want to go out for a nice dinner. Oh, come why on. would he even he would, say that? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. He, he would have ate well, but he should have been blind. Yeah. He didn't have the money for the he didn't have a pocket for the money, but he still couldn't see nothing. There you so go. So when we talk about making our request known, God wants you to talk to him in specifics. If you want Amen. a new car, don't just say, Lord, give me a new car, because the Lord can let somebody come by your house with an old beat-up jalopy and give you the key, but it's going to be new to you. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, yeah. you, and you can't say, no, that, that ain't the time to say this. Oh, no, Lord, I was talking about a 2020 Ford Focus, but you didn't say that. Yeah. You sure did? Yeah. That's right. You said, bless me with a new car. Now, it might be old in one sense, but you ain't never had it, so it's new to you. That's right. But if you specifically say, Lord, I want a 2020 Escalade, I want it fully loaded, I, I, want, I want the seats to warm up, and all this... Now you're giving God your specific request of what you desire from him. Mm-hmm. I agree. And he'll work. He'll work on your request. Come on, talk to me, brother. And not only will what? he work on your request, uh, let me say this, Apostles, before you go. A lot of times we, wanna, we want, uh, in most cases, the permissive will of God as opposed to the perfect will of God. And one of the things I've come to learn in my years of being not just saved, but in ministry is when I approach the throne of God, having a specific prayer request and looking and seeking God's face for either somebody's healing or interceding for anybody or somebody or even praying for myself or my own family. I have to remember to remind God of his word because the Bible tells me that God's word will never return unto him void, but it will accomplish that which I send it out to do. I have to put God's word up in front of him like a mirror. Father, this is what you said in your word. The key here is to pray his word and according to his will. We'll get the permissive will when we say, God, I want to escalate fully loaded, you know, with rims, spoke rims and I want the glow lights on it, God, and I want to have a bumping bone system in there. And that's fine. You'll get that car and getting God's permissive will. Did you ever think about the fact that you never asked for God for a means to either have the car paid for or a means by which you could pay for the car? You just cried about the car. So God will give you his permissive will, but when you get God's perfect will, not only are you getting that Escalade, not only is it going to be fully loaded, but it's going to be taken care of right down to the smallest detail, which includes the car payments and the insurance and anything else that's added to it. Come on, somebody. And, and I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm getting ready to give it to Apostle Wilson, but I'm glad you brought that up and took that statement a little further because a lot of times he will answer the request, but we didn't take the request fully. Matter of fact, not only ask God for the money, but tell him how much you're willing to pay for the car. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. You can put Absolutely. you can name it in your request. I don't care if the car does cost fifty thousand. Tell them, Lord, I don't want to pay amen but forty. I'm calling mm-hmm. I'm calling ten thousand off that sticker. Yeah. See, 
This, this right. is being specific in God. Go ahead, Pastor Whitlow. Uh, the, the, the thing is that oftentimes, first of all, people can't make up their mind what they want from the Lord. And that's the first issue. When you go to God, you've got to know what you want. You have it's senseless to call him and you don't you don't you don't call you don't have a purpose. You know, nothing bothers uh-huh. me more than someone who calls me and said, Oh, I just called. Okay, you called for did you, did you want to hear me breathe? Did you want to hear me <laughs> cough? Did you want to hear me sneeze? You, you uh-huh. called why no. So now that you got me on the phone, what are you wanting to say to me? What are you wanting me to say to you? That's how we sometimes do the Lord, and that's why we often miss things that the Lord really wants us to encounter. The Bible says oftentimes what happens is we pray, right, but we pray amiss that we can consume things upon our lust. One of the things that we do is we'll go to God and tell, and we'll try to bargain with God. Please let me say this, Apostle, and don't get mad at me, but prayer is not an opportunity to bargain with God. Prayer no, is not an opportunity to bargain with God. And people are saying, well, Lord, if you give me a car, I'll take people back and forth to church. And you know good and well, when you get the car, you ain't even going to church. You're going to the club. You're going, to, you're going shopping. You're going looking for this chick, that well, all right, praise God, I'm, I'm on the radio. So let me just say, That's these right. are things that people, this is things that people do, right? And then when they do go to church and they see somebody need to ride to church, they'll purposely go around the other way, right, in the, in the rain, go around the other way. And then when brother, sister get to the church, oh, the Lord bless you. Why didn't you call me? I would have picked you up. And you saw them standing there. People be trying to bargain with the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'll do your will. If you give me a husband, you give me a wife. Why he got to give you something for you to do what he wants you to do, what he called you? Okay, let me go on, Apostle. Well, you know what, Apostle, if I, if I can jump in on that, let's go one step further. They will drive right past you and look at you while they drive driving past you. Know you're going exactly where they're going. You know, I couldn't stop because I had something else I had to do before I got to church. Yeah, okay, what did you have to do besides stop at the red light, run the stop sign, run somebody's cat over, and possibly kill an old lady on your way to church? Oh, what else did you have to oh, do? You, I, you know what they had to do. i tell you what they had to do. They had to go and put the numbers in before uh, before the time ran out. <laughs> they, 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 they didn't want to miss it. You know, you know you, there's a certain cutoff time. If you don't have you your number in by seven fifteen, if, if you don't have your if you don't have that number in by seven fifteen, you don't get a part of that uh-huh. drawing at seven thirty seven. Oh, I'm sorry. And Bible study that, that didn't come out right. So you don't want to be late. <laughs> yeah, that that, that, that didn't come out right. Oh, oh, all, all listeners, all listeners, they give us about thirty seconds so they can take their medicine. <laughs> <laughs> But you, you, y'all, y'all are so right. It sounds comical, but when yeah. you really, but when you really begin to look at what we're saying, we do the most foolish stuff when it comes yeah. to it. Okay. Some yeah. Of the most, some of the most foolish and I really right outlandish stuff we do when it comes uh-huh. to prayer. And prayer is so simple until yeah. I don't even see how we miss how he asked us to pray. Come on. Okay. I, 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 you know, I really don't get it. I really don't get it. Even, even you know, in Matthew, when the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray like yeah. John disciples. And I want somebody to know tonight that Matthew 6 is not a prayer. It's a prototype. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. It just shares with you what to pray. It, how to it, shows, us how, it shows us how to get in. It shows yep. us how to maneuver around. And it shows us yep. how to get out. That's yes. what it does. That's exactly what it does. And it covers every base. We've been praying that one, and I'll show you where we do it the most. How many times have you been in a communion service or you did a homebound service where you went to serve communion, and after you served it, you turned around and let us pray the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
and we're getting all deep and auspicious with it. It's nice to pray. I mean, if it, I, I understand what you're trying to do, but how about if we lead them in something that comes from the heart? I mean, the Bible says, and I know we're not down there yet, but I'm going to say the effectual, fervent prayer of the who? The righteous. Right. righteous man. Those who have right standing in God. Those who have a right relationship with God. There are folks who just got finished murdering somebody, and now they want to pray. Ain't that a trick? Oh. Come on, y'all. Oh, boy. So we, we must understand. We must understand. Amen. Uh, and, and to all of you that are just tuning in, welcome to The Voice tonight on this Elation Radio. Amen. And tonight we're talking about what does prayer do? What does prayer do? And if you're on the line and want to make yourself known, feel free, amen, to come on in. Amen. If you have a statement, don't be afraid. Amen. Come on and talk to us. I want you to All understand right. tonight that prayer, prayer, prayer is the most essential part of our walk with God. It, is our, it is our conversation piece. Now, we talk about love a lot in the church, but what good is love if you don't talk to each other? Okay. Amen. Amen. I, and, I, and I think, and I think this is why a lot, a lot of, a lot of people don't know how to have relationship with God because you don't talk to Him. Can I throw some, can I add something to that, Apostle? Please. Yeah. How is it that folk want the success of their quote unquote program, and they will not seek the face of God for guidance on how to structure it? What is this that we feel like we can go do something and then we'll add God later? What is that? Help me understand that. That's premeditated. Premeditated. That's premeditated. Yeah. You yeah. gonna do it and go ask, go ask God later. That's premeditated. Yeah. <laughs> go, go now, ask later. Is that what see, they said? See, see it, 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 no, no, no. See, here's the problem with a lot of folk when it comes to prayer and seeking uh-huh. the face of God. They're just uh-huh. like the old candy, now or later. Yeah. And you can either pay now or later. Oh, that's it. Most folks don't put God at the now, which is to put him first. They put him later after they done jacked it up. After they done messed mm-hmm. everything right. You're exactly after right. They done went, after they done went in their own flesh and things is all jacked up, now they want to pray. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, help the program. Oh, Lord, make it successful. No, you from start until you found out it was jacked up, you've been in your flesh. So go ahead and stay in your flesh and let the, let the program flop because it's all built on your flesh. No prayer was involved. Just Come on, you, know, and, you, know, you know what else I noticed, Apostle? Some people will not pray until they found themselves in a messed up situation or circumstance and there's no way out. They'll get to court because they know they got a speeding ticket. They was doing 95 in a 25 zone. They're about to lose their license. Oh, Lord, if you'll just help me get out of this, I'll I'll, I'll never do this again. Why don't you stop lying? You know, as soon as you get outside, lead foot, you're going to go right back to what you've been doing until you get caught the next time. Let, let, let me let me bring out let me bring out something let me bring out something because uh-huh. you made a statement a few minutes ago and I don't want to lose that when you talked about David mm-hmm. and how David asked the Lord uh, 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 to 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 forgive him to blot out mm-hmm. what he had done. Watch this mm-hmm. now. A lot of us do just like David did. After mm-hmm. David messed up with Bathsheba, and then God tells him, here's the punishment for your mess up. The child got to die. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Bible said David took off all his royal stuff, wrapped up in sackcloth and ashes, anointed uh-huh. himself, and went and laid on the floor trying to change his sin problem. Mm-hmm. He went in there crying out to God, Lord, spare the child, spare the child, spare the child. God had already told him what he was going to do. Why did he think prayer was going to change what God had already spoken? Okay, come on. It wasn't. And God had already told him precisely what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And then, and then people need to understand. Well, God will change His mind. The only reason God changed His mind with Hezekiah was because Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and reminded God of His walk with Him and His worship before Him. Yes, it wasn't Absolutely. about just Hezekiah's prayer. Yeah, but God got in prayer and said, Lord, I'm a worshiper. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Now, how you going to do this to me? I'm a worshiper, and I've, I've done what you ask of me, and now you're going to send the prophet to tell me, get my stuff in order, I'm dying. Mm. My God. And when the Lord looked at Hezekiah again before the prophet could get out the courtyard, he said, Hold up, turn around. Yeah. Go back go back uh-huh. and tell him I'm adding fifteen more years. And by the way, when you come back out, turn the sun down back ten ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I, I I want this erased off the record. Oh Jesus, have mercy. I, I, I'm trying to tell somebody tonight, prayer is powerful. Now, now yes. man of God, let, let, let's hasten over to our text for tonight because that is, we have done great build up. We, we've laid a wonderful foundation, but let's now, let's crack this text open tonight. Amen. Somebody okay. read that, that 13th verse again. It says, is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. That's now watch thing. this now. What, what, is, see, cause we, we need to get some definition and stuff. And please let me say this tonight, preachers, uh, uh, those, uh, my brothers that are on with me, and any preacher that is listening tonight, could we please stop reading scriptures in the church and in our service and not give definition to some of the words that we're reading? Oh, that's the problem. You don't even know. You don't know what it is, neither. Lord have mercy. But you got to do some study. You got to do some study with some of these words we're reading and give definition. It will change people's life when they begin to understand what the text is really dealing with, like I'm getting ready to do right now, because mm. we got this word in there that says, if any among you are afflicted. Yeah. Yeah. What is it to be afflicted or to have affliction? What What does that mean, brother? It, afflicted, well, affliction simply means ahead. trouble. It simply means mm-hmm. trouble. That's mm-hmm. all. And and, and the Bible it. says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and they're full of trouble. So to be afflicted just means to have trouble. So I would that, agree. So is that what it, so is that what it meant? When, 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 when the word said, uh, I can't remember the character now, but when the word said, he afflicted my soul. Mm-hmm. He it, it, my it was soul. saying that the thing that he was dealing with God troubled his soul with it. Yes, yes. And Amen. so tonight you need to understand that if there are any online tonight that have affliction or are affected or you're dealing with troubles, prayer is the answer. Prayer is the I, answer. I 
agree. Now, can I throw something else out there? Because uh, I know he, he, he uh, Apostle Whitlow brought up the word trouble. Also, you can stop and think, is that he's saying, are any of you suffering? Are any of you hurting? Are there any of you out there who may be in emotional, physical, mental, and in some cases, financial pain? Let them pray. <laughs> And people don't think that those things in life can happen. Yes, they can. One minute, and let's go back, I believe it was, and I hope I got the year right, 2010 was when it happened, when the stock market crashed and people lost thousands and hundreds of thousands. Folk was literally throwing themselves out the window trying to commit suicide because they lost so much money in a single day. Well, the mm. problem here is, of course, it's obvious those that tried to kill themselves didn't know the God that we knew. And for those that knew the God we knew, they had enough sense to even take the time to pray. Their affliction came in a multitude of ways, but they, they figured out that the best way for them to handle their situation is to have. I like the little song that uh, Donnie McCurk had made. So many different people made this song, but he becomes the most notable to me. Have a little talk with Jesus. That's it. Sit down and talk mm-hmm. to the Lord. Let him know what your trouble is. Who's that that made the song? Tell him all about your trouble. I can't remember the rest of it. It was one of them old school songs we used to sing back in the day during devotion. You ought to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Yes, He'll yes. hear your faintest cry. He'll yes, answer my mind. Yes. Mm-hmm. That, that's a prayer will turn and feel the fire burning. Mm-hmm. Just a yes. little have talk with Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. We'll make it right. What's the picture? I mean, and I like how Apostle says, is any among you having trouble? Well, you know, if you're afflicted and you're having trouble, who do you turn to? I mean, the world has nobody to turn to. We have an awesome God, and we have a high priest who can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, yet was without sin. And yet we pretend like he ain't going to do a doggone thing for us. We forget the very fact that He's been through everything that we have ever seen on the face of this earth. There's nothing that Jesus hasn't faced. And a lot of folk go through stuff that Jesus ain't never seen nothing like this. Well, I'm so glad you think so. He may not have reacted to it, but he did see it. Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now watch this, though. Watch this. So, therefore, if affliction is trouble of different kinds, then why are people in the house of God trying to make affliction sickness? Oh, my. Oh, that's a good question. That is a good question. Why are the they trying to make affliction I, sickness? Yeah, the only sickness I see in affliction is the very fact that you're torturing your mind, the membranes of your mind, to believe something that only appears to be wrong. All right? I mean, that's Ernest one and one So maybe Apostle Whitlow has something else he wants to add to that? I think that's it. That's, I think that's just it. Sometimes, you know, uh, there, there are something. Sometimes we can stress ourselves, uh, stress ourselves so much that we create what is called psychosomatic sickness. In other words, yes. you think you're sick so long that you actually become sick because of how you thought about being sick. <laughs> That and that's just the reality, and you don't have to be. So, so, so the real deal is you are sick. I'm not talking about a sickness. No, you are sick. That's it. That's that mindset. <laughs> and, and, and you know, uh, and, and tonight I want somebody to know that is listening. Amen. If you are faced with trouble which is called in this text affliction. Uh, uh, Brother Ernest, uh, uh, give that to us in the Amplified real quick, just that one verse. In the Amplified, it says, if anyone among you suffers, he must pray. That's the, that's oh, wait, the first wait, wait, part of that wait, 13th wait, wait, verse. Wait, wait, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Because, see, we get ready to get into something now. If uh-huh. any among you are suffering, they might pray. Must. Must. Oh, wait a minute. You, you, read, 
You're reading funny tonight. If any I'll of us are tonight. suffering, maybe you should pray. Must. Big Let me try it one more. Let me try it one more time. No, no, no. Let me try it one more time. If any among you are suffering, having trouble, having difficulty, there is something, amen, getting on your last nerve. There's something that you're dealing with that you really, really need God to turn around. Amen. You should almost pray. No, must. You must pray. Prayer must becomes pray. a must. I mean, so you know, we want to... Go ahead. So, that, that is a, so you're saying if you're suffering with troubles, the mandate is prayer. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. The, the mandate... Is yes, it is. The mandate is prayer, and... If you go any other way other than prayer in and of itself, you're going the wrong way to begin with. That would be like going up an exit when you need to be getting on an entrance. Prayer is the entrance into the supernatural realm of God to get the answer from God and bring it back to the natural realm of which your physical body lives. Mm. So, so, so can, can, I, can, can I say this? Is that why some people, every time you see them, it looks like they get ready to sing, nobody knows the trouble I see, because they ain't done no praying about it. Well, you know what? That's not a good. I would say that that individual is living according to their feelings, living according to their flesh, living according to what's in front of them. They ain't walking by faith. They're literally walking by sight by what they feel, by what they think, by somebody else's opinion, and a boatload of other things. Simple prayer in faith to a God who has to be pleased with and by faith will produce a reaction in you that would cause you to recognize that this too shall pass. This storm is Mm -hmm. not here to last a long time. This turmoil is not going to be a tornado in your life all your life. It's a temporary thing, and what it ought to do is cause patience to rise up in you and to anchor you in the Lord to the point and place where you say, God, I trust you. And even if he says like Job said, yet though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Some things that we go through are for the making of us and to get us to a point in place to get us off of our feet and down on our knees so we can humble ourselves before an almighty God so that we can be exalted in that due time. And prayer will put you in that position. Now, now watch this. Watch this. You said, you said something about feelings, Elder. You said something about feelings. Now, let me take y'all back in the day, back in the 70s. Amen. There was a song came out said feelings. Yeah. Nothing more than feelings. Mm-hmm. Well, look, look at how stupid this song is now. It says feelings, nothing more than feelings. Feeling to forget my feelings of love. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. A confused person wrote this song. Listen at it one more time. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Feelings to forget my feelings of love. How you going to yes. have feelings hey, hey. to forget a feeling? Apostle, he all up in his feelings. Yeah. All up in his feelings. Feelings. You know what I'm saying? And the problem hey. with him being in his feelings, he could feel happy right now and feel sad two minutes after that and feel hurt a minute after that and feel angry a minute after that. Get out of your feelings, whoever you are. And then got the nerve to put some nice music to it and then sing it like he feels it. Feeling. Oh, oh feel. no. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. My I just want you to know that. <laughs> let, let's, go, let's go to the next part of that verse. Uh, now, now let, me, let me say one more time before we move on. If you are tonight are listening to this broadcast and you are suffering with affliction, which is trouble, uh-huh. which is which you are faced with all kind of turmoil, the Bible said you must pray. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. no doubt about it. Nothing in between it. You must pray. Now, notice what it said now. It didn't say call your prayer partner. It said you oh. must pray. That's it didn't it say call your pastor. It said you must pray. It, it didn't say that. call church mama. It said you must you pray. Must pray. So See, far, but there's a problem with the that. Instructions, what's that? There's a problem with that. People, mm-hmm. we can, can, I, can I tell you, I, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble with you tonight. Um, I don't want it. you to cut me off when I say this. But if we, we, if we were to be truthful, we have in the body of Christ two types of saints. We have handicapped saints, and we have welfare saints. Uh-huh. Handicapped saints need you to help them because they just can't do it on their own. So for that purpose, uh-huh. we understand we have to bear, those who are strong have to bear the infirmities of the weak. We understand that. But uh-huh. welfare saints, Welfare saints are the ones who say, I don't have what it takes to do it, so do it for me, and I'll just pick it back off of you. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so so, so when, when they're told that they have to pray, what they'll do is they'll often tell you, pray for me. I tell people, and don't, don't y'all crucify me for me. Don't crucify me for this. But I tell people, I will pray with you, and I will pray for you, but I will never pray instead of you. Oh, we you, you 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 have to be involved in this prayer. You have to, if you don't do nothing but say in the name of Jesus, you have to be involved in this prayer. But you ain't gonna have me doing all the work, Apostle. I have to agree with you because there's a lot of folks. You know, I know the Bible says that the strong ought to bear the infirmity of the weak, but the the Bible never said that the strong ought to bear and pray in place of the weak. Somewhere down the line, the weak has to become strong. So we, okay. at, what point, at what point do you plan on gaining some strength? What, you don't have confidence in the God of your salvation? That you, you had enough confidence to give your heart to him. You had enough confidence to get saved. You had enough confidence to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So now you don't have enough confidence to believe that God hears your prayers that God looks at you as the apple of, of his eye, that God has you accepted in the beloved, that God is waiting to hear from you, that his ear is not short, that he cannot hear, his arm is not short, that he cannot reach, or his ear is not deaf, that he cannot hear. Do you not recognize that the eyes of the Lord go to and fro and up and down and throughout the entire earth looking for those to whom he can prove himself strong to? Or let's say what Isaiah said. Have you not read or have you not heard? Need I stop mm-hmm. right there? Come on. You, you know, my, my, my late father, who, who just happened to be my natural father and my uh-huh. spiritual father, he uh-huh. used to tell us all the time, he said people always asking him, pray for me, Reverend, pray for me. He said it'd be some of the same folk all the time talking about pray for me. He said, I develop a new statement when they do that. And so we sitting there waiting. He said, when they ask me to pray for them now, he said, I look back at them and say, and what are you going to be doing while I'm praying? Ah, uh, mm. Okay. He said, you wear me out for prayer while you out there doing the next mess up so you can tell me to pray again. Right. Can I can I take us back a little bit, Apostle? And I know you've yeah. been in church all your life. You've been saved since you was an egg and an embryo and a Lord, thought in your father's help. eye. I recognize help. that. But Forgive back me, in the day, we, we used to depend on the prayers of our parents. And we came to a point in place, I don't know what age it was for you guys, but 11 or 12, I recognized and realized I got to pray for myself now. And I had to learn Mm. at an early age. I tried to learn how to pray. I didn't learn how to pray properly until I was about 20 or 21 years old. But at the same time, at least I had enough sense to recognize that I had to have a conversation with God for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, now let, let's get part two of that verse. And those of you that have maybe just tuned in, amen, we want to say tonight, amen, that we are in James chapter 5, and, and we have only unveiled part A of 
verse 13 thus far. And, and we're letting you know now, if you have affliction or trouble, or if you are bothered by some things, the Bible says you must pray. Come on, read the second half of that verse. Okay, the second mm. half from the King Version says, is any Mary, let him sing songs or psalms as it says. Or better still, let's do the Amplified. It says, is anyone joyful? He is to sing praises to God. Now, in mm-hmm. that, I'm going to start off with that, sir, because I'm about to jump on that myself. See, that's the problem. I'm going to take over. <laughs> <laughs> now, watch this. Watch this. Now, somebody might say, what in the world does singing have to do with prayer? Mm. Well, I want you to understand that there is a prayer song. There is a song of prayer. You can get a melody before God that becomes a prayer in praise. Come on. And he said, if any Mary, now he ain't talking about if you're married. All of a sudden, you're going to start off, uh, must Jesus. <laughs> no, 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 you ain't married. You need to go get married. But I want mm-hmm. you to understand that it is saying that in your prayer time, God can take you to a place of joy, a place of yeah. merriness, that your spirit man will begin to rejoice with you and begin to sing unto the Lord in your prayer time. Amen. Oh, somebody said, that ain't so. Well, I, then I must be crazy because it doesn't happen to me several times. Come on, Laying now. down praying or walking around praying, and then all of a sudden, the joy of the Lord take over in your spirit, and before you know it, you singing this song you ain't never heard by spontaneity of the Holy Ghost. And I mean you and the song and the spirit is just getting down, and you dancing and leaping and jumping for joy, and then you think about it, wait a minute, where did this song come from? The joy of God, the joy of that's God in prayer, the jump in your spirit. Go ahead. That's an amazing thing. How many, how many times, and I'm going to throw two other scenarios where I don't know if this has happened to you. Either I've been in the shower, and then suddenly a song or a psalm, something will come to me, you know? Like, for instance, I mean, I, and I'm just going to throw this out. When I, if there's anybody married, joyful, you start thinking about the goodness of Jesus. And I don't want to give the cliche because we all know what happens. And all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. And that's fine. That's wonderful. But when you really start thinking about just how good God is, I remind you, Apostle Smith, an old song that the late, great Timothy Wright used to sing. Count your blessings. Name them Name one them. by one. Count your blessings. See what the Lord has done. Let me throw one more Timothy Wright classic on you. Yeah, I want to testify how he made a way. <laughs> Let me stop. Yes, but the bottom line is this. You can't help but to start singing when you start thinking about his goodness. You can't help but start singing when you think about what he brought you out of. He brought me out of this, and he brought me out of that, and he brought me through this, and he brought me through that. I was in the storm too long, and the Lord delivered me. Jesus had to rise up in me to bring me to a new place in him. Think about the fact that he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Think about the fact that he's built a hedge of protection around you and didn't give you an insurance plan, but an assurance plan, because the scripture says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If that don't make you get happy and want to sing, I don't know what will. Now, now what, watch this. With, no, I, there was something wrong about his statement, though. Uh, he said, he said, when he get in the shower, you know, so I, I, I think what happened about the flip, though, when that cold water hit him and he forgot that <laughs> turn <the> <laughs> That really 
really woke him up, huh? Listen, if that's the case, I should have been singing Woke Me Up This Morning and started me on my way. <laughs> Woo! He, he called it the joy of the Lord. But that cold water said, you better get about the shower to the, and turn the, turn the hot water on. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, all right. So it said, it says, if any among you be merry. Yeah. Look, it's, I, I, want, I want y'all to understand this. I don't understand all these sad things. Uh huh. Let me tell me, you well, don't never have, you don't never have no joy. Oh, I that never. explains it. That explains I, it. That's I, why you're so weak because it's I, that I the think, joy of the Lord is our strength. Apostle, I think it's not uh-huh. that saints are sad. I don't think it's that saints are sad. I think that saints are seeking to be deep. And so the, the mindset of the deep is i got to look like I've been somewhere in God. i I got to look like I know what I'm talking about because the Lord has been good to me. And I always know that the Lord deals with me. And as long as I am the Lord or is okay, then I'm okay because I pray to the Lord every night. They're seeking to be deep. And so because they're seeking to be deep, they want to act like they're in a place with God that they're merry. Listen, let's not confuse merriness with deepness, okay? Because when you're deep, you're super spiritual in many cases. But when you're merry, it's because of the joy you have because of what the Lord brings into your life. That's why, like uh, uh, Overseer Richard, I can say this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. Yeah. Why? Because I understand that the Lord has been real good to me. And, yeah. and, and so that, that's what gets me excited. Excited about him to think about his goodness. That's what gives me joy. That's what gives me peace. That's what makes me want to rejoice because I consider all the things he's done. Matter of fact, when I think about the psalmist David, he says, um, praise the name of the Lord from this time forth, even forevermore, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. These are psalms. These are the songs that David wrote to the Lord because he thought about how good God has been when when his enemy came upon him to eat up his flesh. He said they stumbled and they failed. He said, he said that the Lord prepared a table before him in the very presence of his enemies. He had a reason to be happy because he said, I once was young. He said, now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Amen. My God. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we really need, just need to understand, first of all, tonight, we said if you are troubled, you must pray. But when you come out of that prayer, uh, God going to lift the burden, and he'll give you joy in your prayer time. And you'll mm. begin to sing joy songs unto the Lord, okay. and it's still counted unto you as prayer. That's the amazing thing about it. When that joy comes, it'll make you sing, but God hear you praying. Mm-hmm. That's oh, right. That's right. Makes a difference. Let's go Amen. to the next part. Come on. All right. The next. Uh, is any the next... sick of you that have called mm. for the elders of the church and let them pray mm-hmm. over him? Anointing him with oil in the name wait, wait, of let, the Lord. Let's not go too far. Let's not go too far. Watch this now. I told you before. Affliction and sickness is not the same. That's no, it's right. Not. That's right. Because now here in this scripture, it distinguished by itself affliction. Now we get down to this next verse, and it distinguishes sickness by itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It says, if there be any among you that are sick. Yeah. Now, read that 
of the Amplified. Let's see what sick means. From the Amplified, it says, Is any among you sick? He must call for the elders, spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Watch this mm. I thought I thought it would take us into a deeper meaning of the word sick. But when you look it up in the Greek, it means if there's any among you suffering with deadly diseases, mm. if there are any among you suffering with things beyond medical ability, all right. with things that look like it's about to take you out. So therefore, this scripture is not talking about you stomp your toe. You're not sick. Go and rub that thing till it starts throbbing. It's not talking about a headache. Go ahead and take your Tylenol and go to bed. It's not okay. talking about a stomach ache. Buy you a Coke, a Pepsi, a ginger ale, and have you some crackers and let your stomach settle. <laughs> it's talking about serious Elements is talking about things that can take you out, take the life out of you. Yes, absolutely. When it talks about sickness, I'm so sick of people, amen, talking about can you come over and pray for me, and you get there, and they ain't got nothing worth praying for. Mm. They're going to lay their hands on themselves, rebuke them, and move them. Ain't Some people ain't, no, ain't nobody there got no serious sickness or nothing. There is something they could have prayed for themselves. Go ahead about that. Yeah, sure. that, 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 that there's, a, there's a couple of things. One, some people are not praying for themselves because, first, some people just don't know how to pray. Secondly, some people don't know when prayer is due unless they find themselves in serious danger. Mm. These are real things. But, but, The issue is that when people are sick, what people do is they go along with the sickness rather than doing what the Bible says. The Bible says you're supposed to call for the elders of the church. That means you're supposed to call for some some people who are so severe in the spirit that you know they can get a prayer through. Not guessing, but you know. You're supposed to call for the elders of the church. So that's why some people stay in their predicament because they don't ever call for their elders. No, what they do is they say right there. Wait a minute, before you go too much further, let's talk about that calling for the elders of the church. That Mm. is not a statement to say call the ordained ministers of the church. That's not what he's talking about. No. It's it's talking about calling mature saints that know how to deal with certain things. Yeah, that's right. That know how to cast out the devil and know and know how to deal with ailments and things that the enemy has sent into people's lives. It says, "Call the elders, call the ones that know what God can do." Prayer warriors that know that know they full of the Holy Ghost. Ain't in there talking about well, uh, if it be your will, Lord, get out of my room. Yeah, now, now it doesn't. Now you it got to say, go. Now, and now it didn't say call Mary Jane or call Tyrone. It said it call Tyrone. <laughs> I'm just saying. It, 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 it That's all they do. I, I, I probably, I probably get into that uh, next next week. But what you don't need nobody in the room praying elementary prayer. Okay. You got it. You got when, it. When you, when you are sick and sure enough sick, you need those that know the word. You need oh, those that got faith. You need those that are anointed. You need those that don't choke the devil until he got to get out of there. Mm-hmm. That's right. I, I, I'm, I'm going to give you all another story. I'll never forget 
Uh, my father was in the hospital one time. He mm-hmm. lay there. He ain't he feeling all that well and carrying on. And, you know, just relaxing. So two of the saints passed by the room mm-hmm. and just happened to notice his face. Oh, they come back in the room. Oh, Mrs. Smith. Oh, my God. We didn't know you was in here. Bye, 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 bye. Well, can we have a word of prayer with you? Mm. He said, well, okay. They went to hollering and screaming and jumping around the room and speaking mm. in tongues or speaking in something and making a mockery of God. My father said, I felt worse when they <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He said, I felt uh, worse behind their ignorance than I did if they just had passed on by the room. Sometimes we just don't know how to do and what to do. And when you Amen. don't know what to do, you need to go somewhere and sit your hand down and let somebody teach you. Amen. Amen. Your prayer is not... Your prayer is not effective just because you know how to make your eyes roll back in your head. Oh, no. I thought only demons do that. Okay, never mind. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. (laughs) Lord Jesus, come on, man of God, read, because we're about to get in trouble. Somebody give me a time check. All right, well. Time right now is it's about eight minutes to the top of the hour. Verse 15 says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he has committed sin, they wait, wait, shall be. Now, and the what of what shall do what? And the prayer of faith shall wait, save wait, the sick. Wait, 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 now. Because now we're getting into another portion of prayer. Mm. This is why this is why you got to have mature saints to come pray for the sick. Because it got to be mm. prayer that's full of faith. Yes, Amen. See, and you can't have nobody coming in there looking to my. Ooh, Lord, did she look bad? Well, you need to go on home right then. Because yeah, just go people, full of, people full of faith is not coming in a room looking at condition. They're looking at what God can do. That's right. My God. They, they're looking for God to work. They ain't coming in there talking about, oh, oh Lord, it sure smell up in here. They smell like they're going to be dead any minute. Well, you get out too. Go <laughs> down to the cab and, and have a Coke or something. Come on. But you got, going to, have a you got to have the elders come with a prayer of faith. My God. And we know faith works. That's right. Can you, can you imagine what kind of element of prayer God is pushing us to right here? It said prayer, put prayer and faith together. Mm-hmm. He, he's not I'm talking about Amen just coming in there and, 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 and as we've been saying all night Letting the flesh be in charge But when you pray the prayer of faith You don't care mm-hmm. what it looks like You don't care That's what right. the problem is You know When you leave that It's going to be different mm-hmm. Amen That's right that's why. See, this is why this is why I talked last week about faith. That we stop thinking that faith is just touching stuff and, and, and walking away with it and, and speaking stuff, and we gonna get it. No, faith goes beyond all of that, and faith can make a situation that looks at its worst. It can make it surrender and bring you to a whole other place. Mm. Amen. So Come the prayer on. of faith shall do what? Save the sick. Amen. Now a lot of people have taken that word save and, and talking about, oh yeah, 
God can come in and say, that's not what that word meant, even though he does that at times. It meant that God can come in and rescue you from the sickness, rescue you from the disease, rescue you Amen. from tuberculosis, rescue you from cancer, Amen. rescue you from lupus and leukemia. Mm. Come on. Amen. He can bring you out of the dilemma of sickness. Mm. That's what it meant. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. God can Amen. deliver you. And Come on. make you hope. My God have mercy. Come on. I'm, did you say eight minutes to midnight? Repeat yeah. that again, sir. Did you say eight minutes to midnight? Uh, yeah, well, four minutes to midnight now. now. Four minutes now. Four minutes to midnight. Well, tonight, Saints, we're going to have to treat you on a Alfred Hitchcock style. We can't finish <laughs> because you've been naughty. And you cannot get the end tonight. You're going to have to tune in next week to see what more God has to say to us. Our 90 minutes is going so quick. Amen. But I want you to tune in next week to The Voice where we'll be on and at it again with this same scripture because there's so much more and we haven't even gotten amen to the end depth of this text yet. You we we're just we're just working our way tonight. Oh, you don't want to miss next week because we're gonna throw out a prayer bomb in the next week. Hey, mm. now we're going to throw out a show in that prayer bomb. And you Amen. don't want to miss it. Amen. And I thank these men of God tonight, the Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow uh, from Augusta, Georgia. Amen. Amen. And the overseer, Ernest E. Richard, Jr., Amen. Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And we thank God for them tonight. And all of you that listen in, amen, you may not have said not one word. Amen. But I thank you for listening in. Elder Richard, were there any amen that had questions or anything on the Facebook? Uh, no, just small comments, and at the moment, I can't see all of them because there were about maybe 34 in all, just an amen and a praise God and, you know, mm-hmm. different things nature, people well, agreeing we, with we, what, we, said, what was said. We even had one individual who came in who had a few things to say. If you had a chance, Apostle Whitlow, to look at last week's broadcast, and they had a problem with what we talked about. They came in today, and they seemed like they were happy because they wrote good words. Have to go. Have a good night, sir. So, <laughs> well, thank God. Thank God. Well, thank God. Thank God. And Amen. you shall know the truth, and the truth, the truth shall make you free. Amen. I, I, want, I want you to understand tonight, amen, that, uh, we are praying for you, you and you, and no matter what your situation is, know that prayer does work, and prayer can work for you. Don't stop yeah, praying. The Lord is nigh. Don't stop praying. He'll hear yeah, you he cry. Don't Lord stop cry. praying. He'll answer you. Don't stop praying. Because it's the Lord that will see you through. And I must close tonight by saying, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Just go ahead, go ahead. And God has great things in store for you. And tonight I say, good night, shalom, and the Lord love you. Yeah, man. Give me Kim. Hit us again.
Oh, 